welcome back let us quickly look at a few more object space methods so we have already seen backface culling and bsp trees and we will see a few more space partitioning based techniques for resolving visibility so the methods that we will see are quad trees oct trees and kd trees and these are all based on different ways in which you can split or partition space so what did we do in bsp trees we used the plane containing the polygons that made up our scene to split or partition space right instead of doing that you can split along the axial planes when you always choose the central axial plane right so for example you uh, create a bounding box and you split along the x axis in the middle and you split along the y axis in the middle if you do it in 2d you get quad trees and if you do it in 3d you get oct trees if instead of choosing the middle axial plane you choose um, axial planes that pass through the median yeah uh, then uh, you get what are known as kd trees and each one of these has different um, different uses so quad trees are in 2d and uh, they are used for image compression they are used for storing sparse data there are various other uses that i'll not go into oct trees are used again for uh, classifying a uh, space utilization in 3d they are used for view frustum culling and i want you to think about once i describe what are oct trees i want you to think about how they might be used for view frustum culling they are used for storing what are known as various levels of detail of an object in 3d um kd trees on the other hand are most commonly used for answering nearest neighbor queries that means if you give a point in space and you want to ask what other elements in in this space lie which are uh, you know near to this point and return for me k such other objects that are k nearest to this uh, given query point such questions are answered frequently using kd trees so let us start with the oct tree so if you are given a bunch of points on a plane how do you construct an oct tree you first consider a bounding box of these points and the root of your oct tree represents this top level bounding box you split this into four parts once along the x axis once along the y axis right down the middle this gives you four boxes that are the children of the root level node okay so the um, the child nodes of the root node represent these four boxes okay and let us consider that uh, the the boxes in particular are numbered as 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 follows so we say that this is child 1 2 3 4 so 1 2 3 4 right so that is the way in which we are considering the boxes on the plane and corresponding to that we have this left to right numbering of the children this is important because we will subdivide now whenever a box in the plane contains more than one point we split that box again so here you will recurse and split everything again so every child will now have four more children now there are some boxes which are empty these we will not split anymore there are some boxes which have only one point we will not split these either only boxes which have more than one point in them will be split further okay so this gives you the next level of the oct tree and we can go one more level and this gives you the quad tree i'm sorry i should have, I, i said oct tree in the previous slide so quad tree right why a quad tree because a node can have four children okay maximum so every time we are splitting our box into four parts 
so you can see that this is very useful for localizing which parts of my plane are empty so these are all empty and these contain data so you can very easily figure out empty regions and non empty regions and therefore you can use this for compression image compression you can also figure out uh, using this uh, which parts of the image has colors that vary really fast and colors that are more or less flat so if they are flat then you do not subdivide and you get larger boxes if colors vary frequently then you subdivide them more uh, so that um, you get a finer variation of boxes there and you can use such a quad tree for uh, image compression okay how does this generalize to 3d well in 3d instead of a quad tree and four uh, children for every parent node you have eight children for every parent node you start with a bounding box in 3d and then you subdivide along every axial plane to give you the corresponding level of the octree and you proceed exactly like the quad tree and you can make the octree around the 3d object now right so now imagine if I represent this mesh of the bunny rabbit by just using the root node that is a very coarse approximation of this object then that is my coarsest level of detail okay? level of detail or as it is also called frequently LOD so the, the, the root node of the octree gives you the coarsest level of detail for the object if you consider the next level of the octree which is these nodes they give you a slightly finer representation of the object if you consider the next level of the octree they will give you a still finer representation of the object till you go to the actual object itself which is the highest resolution of the object that you have so you can represent the object at varying levels of detail what is the use of this there are various uses of this when you when an object is displayed in a scene when it is very close to you you want to draw it at its highest level of detail but when it is further away from you and you cannot really see it very well uh, by you I mean the camera when it is further away from the camera and that is being used to view the scene so say there is this bunny rabbit placed on a table and the camera is very close to this table then you want to draw the actual mesh but if, if this camera is progressively moved further away from the table then maybe you want to replace the mesh by a level of the octree and as you move further you replace it by um, you know coarser and coarser levels of the octree so that is one kind of efficiency or one kind of optimization that you can do to your rendering by using levels of detail how does this apply to visibility well imagine that you have an object like this and this object is being viewed by a camera that has a view frustum the view frustum is as follows This is the view frustum. Okay. Now, how can you do view frustum culling with the octree? Right? What do I mean by view frustum culling? You need to figure out which parts of the bunny rabbit lie inside the view frustum and only pass those down the pipeline. You need to throw away everything else if you do this with the mesh itself you need to figure out for every vertex that lies on the mesh whether it is inside or outside the view frust okay that is a very expensive check to do so how can the octree help well you start with the root node of the octree you compute the intersection of the view frust term with the bounding cube or the bounding box the top level bounding box does it intersect yes it intersects so now you come to the next level of the octree and you figure out do they intersect 
well there will be one part of the octree maybe say this part of the octree that does not intersect at all then throw away this part of the space whatever part of the bunny rabbit that lies inside this part of the space also gets thrown off right then there might be another uh, part of the cube that is here that is here even this does not intersect with the view frustum so throw away all this all this part of the bunny rabbit you never need to check it only the parts of the cube that intersect with the view frustum you move on to their children and check intersection with the cubes that represent those children and the and the view frustum right till you are left with cubes which are entirely outside or entirely inside and there will be only a few cubes that will keep intersecting the view frustum even at their finest level only for those cubes will you need to check with the actual vertex on this mesh to do the most expensive computation for view frustum calling okay so view frustum calling can be accelerated a lot by using octree right the kd tree is the final uh, object space space partitioning algorithm that i want to talk about and i will not go into kd tree in a lot of detail but uh, just to give you an example imagine that you have a point set so these are the points that you have in your point set okay 23549647817 and first so this is the x coordinate in every point set and this is the y coordinate so you first look at all the x coordinates and you figure out the median so the median here is 7 so you take the 7 comma 2 point and split to the 7 comma 2 point by using the x axis right so the 7 comma 2 point becomes your root node okay now all the values that have x coordinate less than 7 go to the left subtree and all the values that have x coordinate more than 7 go to the right subtree okay 7 comma 2 lies here this is the split corresponding to the split corresponding to x equal to 7 so this split is actually along the y axis i'm sorry the split is for x equal to 7 so the split is along the y axis then so we will alternate the axis right then for the remaining data so the remaining data is 2,3 5,4 4,7 4, now choose the other axis the median along the other axis so the y coordinates are 3 4 7 the median along 3 in 3 4 7 is 4 right so for this part of the data you split at 5 comma 4 right so 5 comma 4 is um 5 along x and 4 so it is this okay and similarly on this side you split along 9 comma 6 so, so here also you see that the splitting planes are passing through your data points like the bsp trees but they are not the plane containing the polygon right they are actual planes okay so you alternate between uh, the x and the y so this is the split corresponding to y is equal to 6 this split corresponding to 4 okay and after that again you will split uh, at x equal to 2 and x equal to 4 here you will end up right how do you answer a nearest neighbor query with the kd tree well if you am if i give you a point then you go down the tree to figure out where it would lie if you were trying to insert that point into the kd tree right so for example if you if i give you a point 5,5 then you will figure out that it is less than 7 so it will go to this side 
then 5 comma 5 the y coordinate is more than 5 so it will land up to this side and now you are you are going to insert it somewhere here right in this subtree right so now what do you do you want to compute the k nearest neighbor point so you first check all the points in this subtree and you figure out uh, are these within whatever distance threshold you want then you check its siblings are they uh, near to you and so on right so you can uh, there are a few modifications to this nearest neighbor uh, search that you can do but you can answer this question uh, reasonably fast using a KD tree so there are nearest neighbor queries that you can answer there are approximate nearest neighbor queries that does care of repeated point while answering the query so um, that is what a KD tree is used for and it is another example of a space subdivision algorithm in object space space subdivision algorithms are all in object so that finishes our discussion of visibility algorithms in object space and in the next lecture we will see visibility algorithms in the image space where we try and ask the question which pixels do we want to finally render instead of asking the question which object occlude other object therefore the occluded parts of the object so we will continue this thank you